This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Crown and Andrews Board Games. Fun for the whole family. And Scoot Airlines. Get out of here with Scoot. Hello Australia, welcome to another very big couch. We've got an hour of fantastic things happening today. We're introducing a fantastic service where you can get a vet to your door called Awesome. Stick around for that one. Later on we're talking about a cafe where you can take your dogs and cats here in uh, Wanneroo in WA. It's called Fur Babies, so stick around for that. We've got a food truck coming in cooking up some food outside the studio. Later on the return of Marnie Jerome and Wild Things. Stick around, great guests coming up as well. And we've got Daniele covering movies. We're giving you some board games and Avida open the show. I think that's about enough. Seal, signed, sealed, delivered. They're singing that right up to this opener. Here it is, episode 618. Showtime on the couch. Hey, showtime on the couch. You can see it from your house. You can see it from your house. It's showtime on the couch. With Fred. Before I was so rudely cut off, signed, sealed, delivered, and opening the show today. They're Avida. Please welcome them centre stage as they open the couch. Things in this old world When I touch a bit of nothing, girl Ooh, baby Here I am Sign, seal, delivered I'm yours Ooh, it, baby, set my soul on fire That was a, a bit abrupt finish there. Can't you just do another ending? No? Oh, all right. Fair enough. Signed, sealed, delivered. Wonderful performance, Avita. They'll be back at the end of the show. Top that one, Marnie Jero. Can you make it better than that? I don't know. I don't sing in public generally. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Wild Things. Today we're talking science. Citizen science involves members of the public getting involved in scientific research. It's a great way to harness 
community skills and passion to fuel science to help answer the questions we have about our world. Now today we have Alex Chapman from Guy Resources here to tell us all about science. Hi Alex, thanks Hi. for coming in. Hi Marnie, thanks for having me here. It's great to be here on the couch. It's so exciting to have you here. Now look, as a scientist yourself, and you're looking very sciencey, I must say, you've got Thank a bit you. of a rock and roll shirt going on, plus yeah, your sciencey yeah. shirt underneath, like Superman. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Tell us a bit how people that are not scientists can get involved in research scientists. Absolutely. Research science, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, there's a lot of science that goes around in the country, but there's just not enough scientists to go around anymore. Mm. And the great thing about citizen science is people who know a little bit about science. We all have been to high school, we know a bit about science, mm. but we've gone on and had our own careers. You can re-engage with science that really um, is uh, important for your own community and you can do really important data capture, data analysis, data delivery to the scientists that benefits your local community and the wider Australian community as well. So it's a really cool thing. That's awesome. So it's essentially a scientist running a project and, and general public coming in and assisting them, is that correct? Yeah, and there's whole sorts of levels. It can go from just simple observation mm. uh, with an app, for example, which is what Gaia Resources often does, is build an app for projects. Uh, you can be involved in the data analysis. Uh, you can actually be involved in building a model. You could actually go to a university researcher and say, here's a really interesting problem that we need to solve in the community. And it may be able to be taken up and incorporated into a larger project. That's so exciting. So yeah, it gives really people cool. that want to get involved yeah. an opportunity to be involved yeah. and to make a difference. Exactly. And it gives them a framework to do the data capture so the, the scientific design is actually valid. Right. And that's the role that the scientist does, is make sure that you are going to get an outcome, a scientific paper, policies. It can feed all the way up into government policy. Fantastic. Now give us an example of a citizen science project that you know of. Yeah, well the one that we launched here actually in this very studio just a month ago was called Microblitz. comes out of UWA. On screen shortly we're going to have some images of that one. Microblitz. Yeah, I think this is the launch. This is our first yeah. AXA conference uh, um, uh, event. Yep. Here's Microblitz. Here's a picture of the app. What they're trying to do is build a soil biodiversity map for the whole of Western Australia. Wow. Professor Andy Whiteley came from the UK. He did a soil bacterial map for the whole of the UK. That's amazing. Western Australia is a bit bigger. Yep. So it's going to take <laughs> a lot more yes. time and effort, and that's why citizen science is so important. And they're really targeting the regions. So people can download the app, they can register via the app, and then they can start to submit data actually go out to an area, um, identify a place that no soil has ever been collected, Fantastic. bag it up yep. using the protocol, send it off to the lab at UWA, and that data is analysed, sequenced. Honestly, some of the data that they're coming back, they've found whole new families of back soil bacterial organisms That's very that have cool. never been known elsewhere on the planet. So We're such an old country. We are, and it's a huge state, as you said. Now, we've got um, data visualisation that we've just seen as well. So. That's just incredible to me that there's soil that has never been discovered before, yeah. um, microbes and things in it. And you can see the data visualisation capture there. Can you explain what we're looking yeah, at Yeah, so you've got the uh, app or the website which is showing you where the current records are. Mm. You can click on a point and if there's uh, sequence data, you can actually see a simple map of what was unique about your sample from the five or six major soil bacterial groups you can click on any one of those groups and get some further information uh, on exactly what you have found. And so that little analysis uh, is showing us really unique combinations of bacteria. It's right. an amazing thing. We've got a, uh, the state particularly 2.5 billion years old and very stable, so it's wow. been a very long period of development, which means that's why it's so unique. That's fantastic. What a cool project. Yeah, it's now really tell us cool. a bit about AXA WA. Yeah, okay. So uh, the Australian Citizen Science Association has been going for about five years. Guy Resources has played a strong role in helping that develop. Mm. And it's uh, basically a group of science practitioners who want to enable and empower citizens to become engaged. And it provides a whole pile of tools for doing that. Uh, AXA WA was launched in February. We were at the National Conference yes. in Adelaide together. Yes, we were. It was amazing. Yeah, and we've got some really great people like Deb from the Microblitz. Mm. We've got uh, people from BirdLife WA. We have people from Dolphin Watch yep. involved, uh, uh, SciTech. 
Uh, yeah, so we have a whole group of great practitioners who know about not just the science, but how to engage citizens in doing the science. That's awesome. So people, if they want to get involved more, they can go to the Facebook page, which we just saw. Yep. But there's also the website, um, which is the AXA website as well that they can yep, go to that's as right. well. Yeah, that's right. CitizenScience.org.au. Yes. And uh, that will link you to the project finder. Okay. So uh, the whole point is finding a project that suits you. It's either regionally significant or the topic is significant. You like birds, you like plants, you, you like frogs. And you can check it out and find out what you can get engaged with. Great, and all over the country. So all over look, the country. Alex, thank you so much for coming on. Wonderful. Getting us all sciencey today. It was wonderful. Great. We'll see you next time. Look at the t shirt. Excellent t-shirt. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Guys, if you would like more information about the Australian Citizen Science Association, just check out our website at thecouch.com.au for more information. Thanks for joining us today and it's back to you, Fred. Well done, Marnie. Thank you very much and welcome back. We've got some board games that, that Crown and Andrews have given away. Check them out on the screen. I'll tell you what they are. We've got Scrawl, which is terrible drawing, ridiculous guesses. We've also got Truth Bombs, which is the explosively honest party game. And we've also got this one that's sort of, I don't like that word, but it's sort of things happen, but you know what I'm saying, shh, happens. Uh, that's uh, like a board game with uh, questions. And the, the other one here is Bucket of Doom. These four board games are worth a lot of money, but we're giving them away today on the couch. To win them, all you have to do is uh, check out this graphic. It says the code word. Let's make it a code word. Let's use the name Truth. There it is on screen right now. 0439 929 929. The first person who SMSs me with their name and address and the code word Truth will get this kit worth about $150. Thanks to Cran and Andrews. And if you missed out, check out their website and you can buy them online. Line. That's it for this segment. We'll be back after the break talking movies with Daniele. See you soon. Welcome back to the couch. It's time to talk movies, and we've got somebody filling in today, someone different. Daniele Fotecazzola. Hey, Did how I are get you? it right? Yeah, that was pretty I'm good. I'm probably that the only good. one that can pronounce yeah, that properly. Yeah. Welcome. Thanks for having now, me. Now, you love movies. I do. And you're at all the movies I that do. I go to. So apart from cooking, the yep. other passion is movies. Fantastic. Yep. You've got four great movies today. Yep, yep. So first one we've got is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which is the latest instalment in the Jurassic franchise. Um, basically, Colin Trevoe is back as director. He's teamed up with Derek Connolly. And this time we've got Chris Pratt's Owen, Bryce Dallas Howard's Claire. Mm -hmm. And they're once again on a mission to save the dinosaurs. Does it look a lot like the old? Because I looked at the trailer the other day and thought, oh, here we go. It's just more CGI. Yeah, well, you know, there's like new twists and turns. Obviously, technology's come really far since the original um, series, but it looks a lot darker this time around. So this time around, there's a volcanic eruption that's threatening to destroy the dinosaurs' lives. Wow. Some scientists just think this is nature running its course again and don't want to save them, but... Do you reckon anyone gets eaten on the toilet? Oh, I, I, well, I don't know about the toilet, but I feel like plenty of people will be eaten. Oh, um, yeah, so not for the faint heart. Expect lots of action, plenty of um, like incredible CGI, dinosaurs, and a cliffhanger because apparently a sequel is already in production. Oh, surprise. So, surprise. yeah, so that's already roaring into cinemas now. So, yeah, check that one out if you're a fan of the franchise. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you saw a dinosaur? In blue. We don't really believe it. It's like a miracle. Something's coming. It's a T-Rex. It's a T-Rex. It's not a T-Rex. Blue, come with me. You know you can't stay here. Jurassic World. The island. You're all right. Easy, girl. All of that is in the past. Am I dead? Not yet, kid. I want to show you the future. What is that thing? They made it. Blue! <gasps> Get us out of here. Yeah. Now 
that that looks pretty good. Yeah, like Excellent. I said, not for the faint-hearted though. They spent a lot of money on CGI as well. Yeah. So mm, good. Yeah. What's next? Next, we've got a drift. So mm. very different to Jurassic World. It's a true story um, based on a real-life couple who were left stranded on the Pacific Ocean after mm. a hurricane. No radio, a damaged ship, and it's about their journey. You know, the perseverance and the survival. Mission, the mission of survival, survival for the fittest. Um, to get to Hawaii and get safely on shore. I've seen a lot of these sort of movies in the same sort of theme. Yeah. Where they go out on the boat, they get yeah. stranded and then yeah. they survive it. So, yeah, interesting. Who stars in this one? This one we've got um, two really big um, Hollywood stars. We've got Shailene Woodley and Sam Claffin. So Shailene Woodley's famous for the Divergent series, um, the television oh, yes. series uh, Secret Life of the American Teenager, um, and Sam Claffin's from The Hunger Games. So and who, who did you say directed this one? Uh, the director is Balthazar Kormakor. Huh? Yeah, I, I know. I'm not particularly familiar with his, um, his previous work. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it looks great, really engaging. Nailbiter, um, probably brings some tissues along as well. It's, it's a romance as well. Oh, wow. um, I don't know. I find it hard sometimes when I know a film is based on a true story. Um, especially if it's a bit tragic. Yeah, and you can't say it's just bad. a movie. You know when it's really bad, you think yeah. you've got a true story and you yeah. couldn't make it better? you can't sit there and just go, it's just a script, it's just a movie. Do you remember recently that, that film about the plane? There was only two actors, the dark... Oh, uh, Idris the, Elba and Kate Winslet. That yeah, one there. Yeah. That one there sort of looked really good, but it was so yeah. much of nothing. Yeah. And that was based on a true story yeah, too. Yeah, and even, you know, yeah, really, mm. really gripping stuff. But, um, yeah, so we'll check the trailer out for that one. So that's Adrift and that's in cinemas June 28th. We've been to so many places. What's it like selling out their own love? Miserable. You're either sunburnt, sleep deprived, or seasick. Mm. And after a few days, there's the hallucinations. Why do you do it? It's a feeling. It's intense. It's just you and the infinite horizon. We must be a sailor too, I take it. I don't know that I would consider myself a sailor. Oh, come on. <laughs> Not like you. <laughs> you are. Do you want to take her out? Right now? Anytime. You think you might want to go sailing with me? How would you like to sail the Hosanna to California for us? 4,000 miles is insane. Come sail with me. <laughs> Hurricane Raymond has been upgraded to a Category 5. Should we be worried? Yep, same old type of story, but it looks exciting. Intense. Intense I would hate is to be word. trapped in the water. Yeah. But on the boat, I can live with that. Yeah, I would have no nails left after watching that movie. I'd have no Thanks. body left. <laughs> if I was in the water, I'd be eaten by sharks. <laughs> but a good movie. Yeah, and then um, next we've got is something for the kids. Um, so the latest instalment in the Hotel Transylvania franchise. So Hotel Transylvania 3, uh, Summer's Vacation. So once again, all-star voice cast. We've got Adam Sandler's back as Dracula. Mm -hmm. Selena Gomez is back as his daughter Mavis. And Andy Samberg from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, um, who plays her husband. And Johnny. Yep. Uh, so this time, the um, instead of running the Hotel Transylvania, the monsters have decided to go on a vacation themselves, mm -hmm. and they've gone on a cruise ship. So all the monsters are 
there, the Invisible Man, the werewolves, everybody. And chaos kind of ensues when Dracula unexpectedly falls head over heels in love with the captain of the ship. But plot twist, um, the captain of the ship, uh, Erica, is actually the great-granddaughter of Van Helsing. Mm -hmm. So obviously we know Van Helsing in, you know... Um, Vampire is the uh, notorious monster killer. So she's there to carry out her great-grandfather's mis mission to kill the monsters. So mm. it's up to Dracula's daughter, Mavis, to protect her dad, not only from a broken heart, but to save monsters and their existence. So joining the voice cast for this one, there's Chrissy Teigen's joined. She's playing the Invisible Woman, and Joe Jonas will be lending his voice to Ooh. the Kraken. That's the musician. Yeah, the musician. Yeah, he's wow. on the voice let's hope he's better at the moment. At, uh, this. Yeah, so let's. I don't know. He might be lending some singing vocals as well. Um, so yeah, so that's in cinemas uh, June 28. Uh, so check the trailer out for that one. For over a century, the hotel has been his life. Next summer, if anyone needs a vacation, it's Drac. A cruise? Ooh. Surprise! Oh, no, 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 no. Dad! Okay, smile. Check it out, Dad. There's so much to do. Olympic size swimming pool. I got this. Oh, you can eat for me. Full service spa. Yeah, so impressive. It's like a hotel on the water. Who is that? Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> Oh no, Blabby's gonna puke. Out now, July. Looks good, but a lot of fun with those, aren't they? They're not necessarily just kids' movies these days. Yeah, but. now there's like plenty of jokes that are also in for the adults. So. You may not know, a question without notice. Yes. Do stars that do their voices yes. get paid huge money, or is it very little money for doing voices? No, I believe, it's you know... Good money? Uh, no, no, I believe some of them get paid quite a bit. Because oh, um, remember Ellen was in that the fish one. Yeah, she would have got plenty for Dory. I think as well, depending, once again, like on your name and... Uh, if your voice has become really iconic with that particular character. I mean, like mm. picture Tim Allen and Tom Hanks or Buzz and Woody oh, no, and, huge, and things like that. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, What's next? And next we have the latest instalment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh. So this year we've already had two. We've had Black Panther, we've had Avengers Affin Infinity War, and now we're going back to the story of Ant-Man. So a lot of people were confused Ant-Man wasn't in Avengers Infinity War. So this film takes place post the last Captain America and the Avengers, where we're kind I of seeing... I didn't even know there was an Ant-Man. Oh, there you go. Well, where did we're he get his energy two. from? <laughs> where did he get his power from, do you know? Uh, it's all tech. So it's all tech. He's got like a suit that can make him various sizes. So he can shrink to the size of an ant. And in this film, as you'll see in the trailer later on, he can also grow. Mm. This time, so he's been... Um, uh, Ant-Man's played by Paul Rudd, so comedian. Okay. It's it's very That's different funny. style to the typical superhero movies. This one, so really breaking away from the heaviness that we've seen in Infinity War. Marvel Ball. movies have all got that. Cons They've all got that that humour, yeah. Um, so this time, Ant-Man's once again being recruited by a father-daughter duo led by Michael Douglas's character and Evangeline Lilly's character Hope. Um, on a secret mission that's going to tie in with a secret of their past. And this time Evangeline Lilly, uh, there was a lot of complaints she didn't get a lot of the action in the last movie, but this time she's donning the famous Wasp outfit. So she'll be joining the action mm. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Sounds fantastic. Yeah, so that's in cinemas July 5, so check out the trailer for that. So, how long have you been Ant-Man again? Not long. It just sort of happened. I wish I could fight bad guys like you. I seem to mess it up almost every time. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Hi. Like a partner. Dr. Pim, I actually heard what happened to you. You opened up the quantum realm. That's when this crazy could be ghost who like walks through walls and stuff. Stole your tech. And now she wants to take over the world or whatever. Who would have believed that in your hour of need, you would turn to us? Not me. 
happened because we robbed you. Do you remember? That's us. The only chance we've got is both of you. Ant-Man and the Wasp teaming up. Follow my lead. She seems more intense. You go low, I'll go high. I have wings. Why would I go low? We're gonna die. I don't wanna die. We didn't die! Hey, what'd I miss? We were just tiny! I was partners with Hank on a project called Goliath. How big did you get? By record, 21 feet. You? 65 feet. 65. If you two are finished comparing sizes... 65. There you go. That's an interesting movie. Uh, I didn't see, you know, uh, Rebel Wilson in that. I bet she missed out on that movie too. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I'd take everyone back to court again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's have a look at the top five movies for this week as they stand, and they are as follows. At number five... We've got Avengers Infinity War. Number four. Followed by Hereditary. Number three. Solo, A Star Wars Story. Oh, number two. I knew they'd be there. We've got another superhero film, Deadpool 2. But I'm glad number one's not a superhero movie. What is it? Yeah, we've got Ocean's 8 has taken out the top. Thank you very much to Daniele. We'll see you maybe in a couple of weeks, hopefully. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for me. coming in. Thank you. Time for us to take a break. After the break, we're going to be talking pets. All things pets. Join us after that. Welcome back to the couch. Nearly caught me unaware. Guess what's coming up? Red Nose Day. That's coming up on the 29th of June. If you haven't already decided to support them, because I know you will, check out their advert. Hi, I'm Emma from The Wiggles, and I'm wearing this wonderful little red nose. It's a small symbol of hope, a powerful little thing with the amazing ability to save little lives. It's a red nose, and we're all wearing one on Red Nose Day. Buy one. Fund research. Save lives. Simple. Red Nose Day, a little give for a little life. There you go. Please support Red Nose Day. It's coming up very soon, the next week or two. And somebody <laughs> else that's coming up very, very quickly is a fantastic new concept in cafes for pets. They're here to talk to Nisha. They're called Fur Baby Boutique and Cafe. Over to you, Nisha. Lovely. Thank you, Fred. Very excited today to have Shari, the founder of Fur Baby Boutique and Cafe. Welcome to the couch. Oh, thank you for having us. And very excited. Welcome, Ishi. Gorgeous. Ishi's little thrilled. <laughs> so tell us the breed of Ishi first. We've got a lot of dog lovers Ishi's out there. Ishi's a, a Shiba Inu and she's from Japan yeah. and she's six years old. So, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Now, Fur Baby Cafe, it's, it's the first or it's one of a kind, really, isn't it? It, it certainly is. So it's located in West, Westminster and mm -hmm. it's a paradise for dogs. Mm -hmm. So it's fully customised to make them feel at home. So there's a cafe, there's a mm -hmm. boutique, there's a grooming salon, mm -hmm. there's a dog treat bakery, mm -hmm. and then there's a doggy daycare as well. Wow, yeah. wow. And um, I understand, like, with the cafe, you actually have a chef that yeah. um, works there. So yeah. it's human-grade food. Uh, yeah, definitely human-grade food. So we have, mm -hmm. like, Eggs Benedict for breakfast and we have chorizo cheap beef burgers for lunch. Um, <laughs> um, so our chef's really talented and make sure that all the food for the humans is divine mm -hmm. and equally all the food for the pups is just as tasty and, and good for them as well. Fantastic. And um, I was having a look at a video um, before and I was just so amazed to see the, the barkery and the boutique and how it all coincides in one space. Yeah. It's huge. So I'm lucky a lot of the boutique stuff is from throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And so I make sure that we get stuff that's really unique that you just mm -hmm. don't find in pet stores. Mm -hmm. And then the bar cree is really healthy treats for them. So stuff that they, I suppose, is good for them, that mm -hmm. tastes nice, but is really good healthy so they don't get too chubby eating all those yummy, delicious treats. Wonderful. Tell us how you came up with the idea. Look, it's really big throughout the world. Um, Australia's health legislation is really prohibitive when it comes to letting animals eat and consume where humans are. So I suppose I grabbed the concept from 
Asia and made sure that we were compliant with our health legislation to mm -hmm. grab a paradise for pets. Wonderful. So what types of people do you get coming to the cafe? Oh, we get all people, especially it's a good family outing. So everyone can come from kids to parents with their, with their dogs. Mm -hmm. And then it's also good for people who, I suppose, don't have dogs at home and really just want to cuddle. So all mm -hmm. the dogs that come are really social, social of course. So people are welcome to come and, and meet other dogs and, yeah. and get to play with them. So Wonderful. And there's so many community engagements as well that you take on. Tell yeah, us about those. Yeah, for sure. So we have um, disabled people that come through on a Friday mm -hmm. and um, while they're severely handicapped it brings them so much joy to be able to watch the groomers because our grooming salons behind glass oh, so you're wow. able to sit there and actually watch the groomers do their magic mm -hmm. and um, it brings joy to to everyone to be able to see the dogs getting pampered oh that's fantastic now so if I'm going to come to the cafe um, talk me through what it's like when you walk in because I know you've got some very special care for the we do we do kids. so we ask that all dogs are on lead um, and then they're normally greeted by Nana Fur Baby so she's <laughs> there to treat all the dogs and that's and make your them, mum for everyone is, wondering yeah. Nana Fur Baby <laughs> um, to make them feel all special as they come in and then we've got our barista who will take your order to send it through to the chef and then there's an indoor Sorry, an outdoor alfresco mm -hmm. area, but it's all enclosed with blinds and heaters, so it's good for uh, hot days and cold days yeah. as well, so everyone's like really comfortable. Wonderful. So yeah. you can have a lovely winter. So relaxed is she, aren't you? So <laughs> relaxed then. We can see the outdoor area there on the screen. So really um, you feel safe when you bring your pet there? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, we're a little bit off Wanneroo Road, but mm -hmm. it's all enclosed so that um, it's really safe for dogs. Okay, and where can yeah. people find out more? Um, on our website, yeah. so it's furbabycafe.com.au. Well, it's always a pleasure to have such lovely businesses on the show. Yours has really grown from a passion. Yeah. Um, anything else that you'd like to tell the audience about the business? We have um, play dates on the weekend as well. Yeah. So we invite specific breeds to come and play off lead with all their cousins. And everyone's, of course, welcome. So if you like a particular dog, check out our website for all the play date mm -hmm. listings and you can come and, and watch them all play. Fantastic. Well, look, it's so clear, Shari, your passion coming yeah. through, as well as how much thought and effort has really gone behind your business, yeah. which has been going for three years three now. Years so now, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. We look forward to having you and Ishi and any of the other beautiful fur babies on the show again soon. Oh, thank you. Um, just that website one more time yeah, for our team. It's furbabycafe.com.au. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on, for Shari. Me. Thank you so much, Ishi. <laughs> if you missed any of that, of course, you can go to the couch.com.au, our Facebook page. But for now, it's back to you, Fred. Thank you, Nisha. And what a wonderful, wonderful behaved uh, animal there. I'm talking about the dog, by the way, there, Nisha. Thank you, Eric. In case you're wondering. But Nisha's well behaved as well. Can I just ask Shari? Shari, what days are you open and times are you open? Um, every day, uh, except for Tuesday from 8.30 till 4. Beautiful. I'll see you there soon. Just make sure you tell me which are the pet treats and which are the human things. Not that I'm fussy, but I'm fussy about who I fly when I fly overseas and I only use Scoot. Scoot are giving us 10 amazing tickets to give away. There's the beautiful Dreamliner plane. You can go to 10 amazing locations or more. You can go to Athens, you can go to Malé, Berlin, Singapore, China, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong and many more destinations on the Scoot um, network. Now, if you'd like to win, it's easy. All you have to do is put on an SMS the word Scoot. You know how to spell Scoot. It's on the screen. We spell it for you. Put your name and address and send it to 0439 929 929, or you can email us as well for those people who don't SMS to scoot at the couch.com.au. We need your name and your address. Now, folks, please, please make sure that no matter where you are in Australia, you can win. Last week we gave it away to a Brisbane lovely viewer from Brisbane. So you could be anywhere in the world, actually. Anywhere with Scoot Flies, you could win. So in a couple of weeks, we'll be giving away another one of these wonderful, wonderful trips. Pick up the phone's a competition. All you have to do is when we dial you within five rings, you need to pick up the phone, say hello. I'll ask you who you are. Sometimes we ask for the uh, code word, but I, I guess you know what it is if you sent it already. And uh, if you win, you can take a friend with you. It includes food and baggage and everything else. So why not do something different? Fly Scoot. Thanks very much for Scoot and their sponsorship of this segment. Time now to go back to Nisha. She's got another fantastic segment to do with your pets. Lovely. Thank you, Fred. Very exciting to have another furry organisation here in the studio. I'd like to welcome Dr Louisa Finney to the couch. Thanks for having us. Now, you are a WA vet doing extraordinary work, but here to talk about Pawson today. That's correct. 
So tell us about Pawsom. What is it? So look, it's an amazing new uh, app-based uh, booking system mm -hmm. that enables people to book a vet to come to their home. Oh. So home visits are really important for, um, for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it convenient for the owner. It mm -hmm. makes it much better for pets who can get stressed out, yes. um, such as my Ernie dog here. Does oh, not look well very stressed at the Ernie, moment. Yes, but he's sleeping, so I nearly forgot he was No, like but if, if I took him into a veterinary waiting room filled with other dogs, cats, he would go berserk. He's, he has high anxiety levels, especially with other dogs. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's great for, for people with pets who mm. don't like to be other, around other animals. Mm. Um, it's great for cats who, mm. most cats don't like to be put in a box, <laughs> put in a car, yes, yes. and then put in a room full of dogs. And it's just convenient, <laughs> isn't it? It is it, convenient. As well, if you're working long hours or whatnot. Um, exactly. Tell us about um, what the steps are. So I call you, and then what happens from there? Yeah, well, basically, you jump online um, mm. or you download the app. So oh, there's so it has a, to be app. Yes. Yep, so there's an app-based booking system, a little bit like Uber, I suppose. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so rather than getting an Uber Eats, you're getting a, a Uber vet to come to your house. Wow, so, that, I, I understand now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so you open your app, um, you literally book a vet to mm -hmm. come to your home um, at a time that suits you. Mm -hmm. um, you can even book a preferred vet, so we want to have plenty of continuity of service. So yes. if you've seen myself before, you'll probably mm -hmm. hopefully want to see me again. Yes. So you'll um, request myself to come back if it's your second um, home visit service. Um, so once you've decided on a time and a place, mm -hmm. um, the vet will then come to your house mm -hmm. um, and do the visit mm -hmm. and it's as easy as that. Wonderful. And is there a, um, I'm assuming there is a fee, but what does that yeah. look like? Yeah, so it's basically $99 for the first uh, consultation. Okay. So that's the full health checkup and, uh, and everything, which is um, really affordable um, yes. compared to most of the home visit services mm -hmm. that are running. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, everything else is, is, is pretty much in line with what you'd pay at a vet clinic. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, and tell us some success stories because um, it's convenient yeah. um, and I'm sure a lot of people have given really positive feedback as well. Yeah, absolutely. So mm -hmm. um, it's been used... Um, for the last over a year in Sydney. Um, mm -hmm. We've had over a thousand clients mm -hmm. um, who've booked with the app mm -hmm. and have all given really great service. So it, it's mm -hmm. certainly working really well. Wonderful. So you're in WA yes. and you mentioned Sydney. What other states have yeah. you opened in? Um, so, so, so it started in Sydney. It's now Me uh, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth mm -hmm. um, and also to be opening in Adelaide as well. Oh, wonderful. And what's it like being a vet, being a part of Pawson, awesome, going into people's homes and providing mm -hmm. that service? Look, I really love it. I love to provide a really personalised service when it comes to I love to have plenty of time to get to know my client, to get to know the pet, and to also be able to get to know their relationship. Mm. Um, it enables me to be able to really recommend what kind of what kind of mm. treatment options are going to be best suited to, to mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, it's great to see the pet in, in their own home environment as well. I can often notice things about what they're feeding them or how they're behaving mm. um, much better. Mm -hmm. um, and also being able to examine a pet while they're relaxed is so much easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, while a pet's relaxed, um, you know, they're much, uh, you know, their heart rate is the normal rate, mm -hmm. whereas if they're in the clinic and they're stressed out, their heart rate's really high. Um, you know, if they're stressed out in the clinic, they might not be able to sit still so I can examine them properly. <laughs> you know, it just adds a whole other element um, mm -hmm. that makes examination of the, of the pet quite difficult if they're stressed yeah, out. So being sure. at home is great. Makes sense. Yeah. Then, you know, and from have a, a bath and go straight to bed. Yeah, afterwards. totally. <laughs> and, and from a veterinary employment um, position as well, um, I think it's going to be really, really popular for veterinarians because it provides flexibility and True. ownership of their business as yes. well. So amazing for, um, for, for vet mums. Mm -hmm. You know, they can literally just say, look, I've only got a two hour window of mm -hmm. my day that's mm -hmm. doable for me to work. Yes. So you have that flexibility as a vet. That's wonderful. Now, mm -hmm. I'm sure that the audience is sitting there thinking, what pets, um, you know, what who will you see? What will your mm -hmm. lovely little furry babies be? Yeah. Um, so at the moment, uh, we're, we're looking at um, dogs and cats primarily. Is that what you meant? Sure, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was getting so excited, but oh. I had so many furry animals oh, on right. today. <laughs> <laughs> so dogs and yeah. cats primarily, yes. and then moving um, to a more diverse range of, of pets. Yes, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So um, in terms of the audience sitting out there, is there anything else you think they need to know about Pawsome to get engaged? Um, the other things that's important to know is that we also can do home euthanasias. So that's okay. another really important element of the service. Okay. When it's time to say goodbye to your to your fur baby, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to be doing is, is traipsing into a clinic. Sure. Um, I mean, I'd be an absolute mess. I don't really want to be mm -hmm. in public at sure. that point. And Me obviously too. it's better for the pet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's really all. But um, yeah, easy just jumping on, downloading the Pawsome app or go to pawsome.com. Wonderful. So it's mm -hmm. Awesome.com. Yes. Yes. P A W. 
sorry, P E W double S U M. It's like possum, yeah. but yeah. starting with paw. <laughs> when yeah. I thought that awesome, when I was like, and a possum, awesome. yeah, it's exactly. so great. That's no, lovely. <laughs> well, Dr. Louisa, always great to have you on the show. Please come back again and talk to us about it more, or we could even bring another beautiful, beautiful We'd love on. to. Thanks yeah. for having me, Nisha. My absolute pleasure. Mm -hmm. So if you've uh, not remembered that particular website, please don't worry, because you can go to thecouch.com.au, the Facebook page, to find out more. But for now, it's back to you, Fred. Thank you very much, Nisha. Can I just ask uh, Louisa a quick question? Yeah. Louisa, can people claim anything on their health insurance? Uh, oh, a lot of, in, so health insurance has pet cover. Can they claim anything, or is it not covered? Oh yeah, absolutely. So if you have a pet insurance policy, um, then all of the possum visits um, will be um, claimable, just depending on your on your pet Beautiful. insurance policy. So check that out with your health insurer and also, or pet insurer. And the other quick question is the app. Can anyone download it? Is it free? And is it um, on all pro? Uh, you know. Apple and also Samsung? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So you can download it um, from um, yeah, either either of those stores. Beautiful, and they can do everything from the app. Absolutely. Well done. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> Thanks so much. You're awesome, possum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we need to take a break on that note, and we're going out to the food truck outside. Hopefully there's some food for me. See you after the break. Welcome back to the couch. We are outside our studio here at Leaderville at Side. We're recording a fantastic segment here with this wonderful man, Igor. Welcome to the couch. Hi. How now are you're you? from Piadina de la Nonna. Piadina de la Nonna. Tell yes. me a little bit about food trucks. Why have they become so popular? Uh, it's becoming so popular because it's something very quick and easy to eat, and um, it's like even the people can come with a car and just pick it up and go, and it's very quick and easy, like two. Three minutes and then All right, well, and tell me a little bit about yourself, Igor. How uh, did you learn to cook? So basically, I started one year and a half ago, and uh, my family always like uh, was in the in the world of the cooking, and my dad was always working uh, in a five-star hotels. So basically, just passed me the his uh, potential. Okay. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, so... So tell me a little bit about the food that you cook. What can we expect to get at your truck? Um, so basically, the, the most good thing in this, um, this food is uh, that it's very healthy because it's made with our own flour. Well, tell me about your flour because you mill it yourself, don't you? Exactly, exactly. We just uh, bought this, uh, this milling machine and uh, it's like stone milled mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, basically just going in 36 degrees, no more than that. So that's main is uh, it keeps uh, staying all the nutrition and all the vitamin they all stay close inside in and your flour. And that's pretty pretty so unique, isn't it? Yeah, healthy. it is. It is. It is. So it's tell me, vitamin. can people yeah. order your flour? Because I know people can get it. How do yes, they do it? Yes. Yes. So basically, we just start probably one or two weeks ago to sell. So if the people want to buy it, just uh, they go on our uh, web page. Uh, there's piadina.com.au and uh, otherwise they can come to my van have a coffee and then order talking the about your van where is yeah. it located so my van is located in drovers place uh, at 61 uh, basically it's just next to the mini golf and the fire station and uh, basically it's, it's a perfect spot because uh, there's a lot of bushes around yep. a lot of birds around it's a very very nice place to relax now, and, and have a you're not open 24 hours. Tell me the hours that you're open. So the hour we open, I basically start eight o'clock and we close at twelve o'clock. So you, you take yeah. the breakfast and lunch out. Uh, yeah, 12 yeah, to 1 yeah, o'clock. Yeah. Tell me what we can expect to eat there because I've seen some amazing things here. But yeah. I want to ask you, tell me what the name's all about. What's Piadina? Yeah, so Piadina, I mean, is this Italian flatbread. Uh, it's basically, obviously, made with our own flour as well. And it's basically just the dish ingredients like you obviously it's mixed with the water, a bit of water, oil, olive oil, and and a bit of yeast. And uh, this was the pastry that comes out from from this. Mm -hmm. And uh, what can this, we put in them? Because so I know basically, many this, this is uh, no piadina. This yep. is called prosciutto. All right. That is made with the same pastry, uh, but um, it's obviously this one is the one of the most popular, the two most popular. So what's in these two that I'm, uh, I'm seeing here? This one is uh, with the sausage onion, yep. and I put like a bit of uh, barbecue sauce in there. It's okay. probably the most popular. And uh, the sausage is made. Uh, I made my own as well. So it's made with uh, sausage, pork sausage, free range pork sausage, 
and, and um, a bit of Italian herbs and uh, yeah, they Fantastic. give a bit of flavor. It's very, very, now, very good. Can you make very a piadina for us? Yeah, I can make I it for you. Yeah, yeah. Want to have yeah. A, you want to do that for us? Yeah, by the way? we can do that. Tell us the method. Tell us the steps. Yeah, no worry. So if you want to come in this side, I will show you uh, how to roll it. So basically, we put a bit of our fly, okay. flour on the top. Yeah. So you've already pre-made the flour? Yeah, no, basically, the, the, obviously the flour is pre-made. The dough uh, needs to be made at least uh, one night before. Yes. So it needs to rest in the fridge for, for one night. Yes. And then it's ready to go the next day. Now I'm assuming so, you use your organic flour in that? Yes, yes. It's my, it's my flour. Even this one that we're using. Can uh, I ask, how much it? does the flour cost? So one basically, kilo uh, one kilo bag is a uh, fourteen dollar. Pretty cheap. And uh, yeah, and like especially like for for a homemade like flour like yeah. this now, with no preservatives. So. so what are you doing now? You're putting it through a machine. What's that machine so doing? So this is the roller machine. Yes. Uh, so basically, I mix it. Uh, what I was doing is just make it a little bit flatter. Yep. And makes it in a round shape and just Put pass it through, it through the there and it'll make it flat. Yep. And then I give it a bit. Of hole on it, like there. Okay. Like there. And there you go. That's that's to make it cook better when we go in on the. So on it's sort the, of like a pizza the, dough, isn't it? Uh, looks like, but, but tastes better. it's not. There's less yeast, and uh, probably we can say it's a little bit uh, more simple. Has so it got I'm, salt and oil, or just basically? No, no. Nothing? It's uh, it's probably like for for one kilo of flour, you got yeah. probably two three grams of, uh, of amazing. Of, uh, so very healthy. Salt. Now, yeah. Piadina and uh, these beautiful stuffed pastries here. You, they, you do more than just that. What uh, else can we get here? Yeah. So basically, uh, so we got um, uh, this is obviously. So we got basically the um, uh, green vegetable bread. Yep. And then uh, the back on the neck. That one is another very, 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 very uh, popular. And yep. we got the, the Piadina one. The, yep. We got the one with the prosciutto rocket and cheese. And uh, another one with the salami rocket and cheese. Beautiful. Now it's not just pizzas, but stuffed pastries and Piadinas. Yep. You do beautiful coffee. Tell me your coffee brand. Yeah, coffee brand. We just start uh, probably two weeks ago yep. with the blacklist. Um, Blacklist is the brand. Very, very, very happy. Uh, it's very nice coffee. Can you make us a coffee while we're waiting? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Let's have a look. Now, this yeah. is um, a fantastic fresh brew. Now, tell me a little bit about the coffee. So, uh, this coffee is called uh, Queen Bee. Yep. Uh, Queen Bee is basically a mix from uh, coffee bean with uh, basically Ethiopian coffee bean yep. and Indian coffee bean. And this makes like this uh, very dark uh, um, chocolate flavor yep. and very mouth filling flavor as well. So and can we buy your coffee or, uh, as in um, in a packet of a kilo uh, or you don't sell the coffee just uh, in the cup? We don't, we don't sell it at the moment. Not yet. Uh, but we're already speaking with the, with the blacklist right. and we're planning already uh, to start soon okay. uh, to sell Now I know we're running out of time yeah. while you make me that coffee. Um, Tell me a little bit about the desserts that you make as well. Uh, sorry? You make desserts as well, don't you? Yeah, um, dessert, like a, basically the dessert is the one uh, we got here. And uh, this with the Nutella and banana. Oh, Nutella, that, lovely. That's, uh, that's very healthy. That's very healthy. <laughs> that's the sweet side of it. Yeah, that's the sweet so side. So you've got so. breakfast, you've got lunches, and yep. you've got desserts and you've got great coffee. Yeah, how many we've got even the, the, the vegetarian one. You've uh, got vegetarian as well, which is yeah. amazing. Free vegetarian and brie is the one, obviously. Now, people can check out your website, which is piadina.com.au. Yes. We'd love yes. you to go there. Yeah. You're making me an awesome coffee. Can we give yeah. it something to our crew to try? Yeah. Let's well, just give some of our crew. Yeah. I'm going to take some of these fantastic yeah, patrons no while you finish my coffee there. Yeah, no problem. Let's give some to the crew. One, both of you there. And I'll give some more out. Now, again, give us the times that you're open. Uh, so basically open uh, from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Yep. yep, and that's and, uh, We just, uh, I want to say something about uh, our milk yes, as well. Yes, just quickly say that. Uh, so just, we just start Bannister with, uh, Downs. with our, our uh, Bannister Down. And we're very, very, very happy with that. Yep. Uh, very creamy milk. Uh, it's very local as well. Very, local very cow. healthy as well. Just before we go, yep. the flour again 
is fantastic. It's available, it's organic. Yep. They can buy it on the website, they can order it from you. Yep. You won't get it straight away. They can order it and pick it up. Yeah, so basically they yep. can order uh, um, like when they come in the van or, yep. or obviously on the, on the website. Beautiful. And then basically they come. I, th I think they, um, they come. Uh, um, yeah, your coffee? I think your Piadina is burning. There you go. Thank you very much for coming down today. Now, how many people can you cater for? Sorry? How many people can you cater for with, if they come down? Oh, like, uh, how did I even like a family of 10 people? And uh, very, very easy. The um, coffee is beautiful. So, yeah. Here Amazing the coffee. It's very, it's really good. You Just, want me to try some? Just I'll probably, I'll let you finish that off. Thanks for your company, everybody. Time for us to wrap it up. We've got Evita back in the studio waiting to perform. Just my imagination. Don't forget to watch The Couch next week. Don't forget to support Piadina della Nonna. Check out their website, piadina.com.au. We're going to enjoy some of the meals here, and we'll catch you next week. Thanks to all the crew. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Each day through my window, I watch him as he passes by. And I say to myself, I'm so lucky he's so fly. She drives me crazy. To have a boy like you. But in reality, Ooh. you never need
This episode of The Couch is proudly supported by Crown and Andrews Board Games. Fun for the whole family. And Scoot Airlines. Get out of here with Scoot.